The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every ma everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Uh, Romans chapter 14, 10 to 12. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 to 12. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every one take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And last, Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 25. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us as we study about the judgment seat of Christ. I pray, O oh God, that this, this will give us a perspective on how this particular doctrine will change our lives now so that when it does come we are going to be prepared and not be ashamed at your coming so i pray O oh god that you will give us wisdom as we listen to your word and give me lord wisdom as i teach your word to your people i pray lord that we are going to not only listen and grasp the truth of this doctrine, but we are going to be willing to apply them, O God, as you see it fit. So help us, Lord, to glorify your name today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, as I have said a while ago, we are going to study about the judgment seat of Christ. And we will study this in the context or perspective or with a view on how our behavior will be changed in the light of the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. So one day after the rapture, every Christian washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, saved because of God's grace, repented of their sins, and received Jesus as their Savior is going to to give an account to God on the way that we lived our lives after salvation. We are not going to judge according to the life that we have lived for punishment or for uh, heaven. This is not going to be, this is not going to determine if we are going to hell or if we are going to heaven. But this will determine if we are going to have rewards 
or if we are going to suffer the loss of rewards by not serving the Lord when He saved us. As a proof to this, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, there is a command or allusion given to us by God, and the verse says that, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. So there is a laying up of treasures. And the Bible says that we should not lay treasures up here on earth. Because most of the times, this is what people are doing. They are trying to do everything by exerting so much time and effort and using their talent in order to amass wealth that will only be good for this world. But the Bible says, Were moth and rust that corrupt. The things that we have in this world are corruptible and where thieves break through and steal. They can be lost any moment. I remember in Pampanga when Mount Pinatubo erupted in Bacolor, Pampanga, there are beautiful, uh, big, huge houses. And after that event, they were all under the lava. And they cannot be used anymore. One of my friends chidingly said that if you want to buy a car for only 500 pesos, and I said, oh, what kind of car is that? It is a brand new car. It is just used for about a month. So why it is so cheap? He said, because it is under the lava. You have to dig it first before you can use it. So what I'm trying to say is that whatever we may have in this world is something that can be stolen. Is something that will be corrupted. Is something that actually has no value, but the value is only for this world. But on the contrary, the next verse, the Bible says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So there is a way that we can lay up treasures not only on earth, but in heaven. Where the Bible says, where neither moth nor rust that corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Meaning to say, anything that we lay up in heaven, anything that we do for God, will remain forever. Amen. It will be there waiting for us. That is why our life here is something to believe in the light of eternity. It's something to believe in the light that we will appear before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. It must be lived in a way that it will glorify our God. Amen. So this will happen at the judgment seat of Christ. So before I go and teach about the judgment seat of Christ, I want to let you know that there are two key judgments in the future. There are many judgments, but there are two key judgments in the future. One is this, the judgment seat of Christ, and number two is the great white throne judgment. So many Christians are confused about these two things. They make these two as one because of some verses that they do not really understand and because of, of uh, reading some verses that they do not want to give an effort to really understand. Because there is a verse in Matthew where it says that uh, all the dead will rise up and then God will separate those who did right and those who did wrong. So in their mind, there is only going to be one judgment and that judgment uh, is a general judgment for all. But we need to understand that there are two key judgments in the future. As I have said, one is about the judgment seat of Christ and the other one is about the great white throne judgment. So let me contrast the two. Number one, that in the judgment seat of Christ, no one goes to hell. The Bible says we, including Paul, Christians, will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So in that judgment, nobody will go to hell. Because all of those who will appear at the judgment seat of Christ are saved people. While in the great white throne judgment, no one goes to heaven. At the great white throne judgment, it is only a judgment for those who are not saved. It will determine their degree of punishment in hell. And nobody will go to heaven. Next, 
at the judgment seat of Christ, no unsaved people are present. As I have said, only the believers are there. You will not see one unsaved at the judgment seat of Christ. While at the great white throne judgment, saved people are present but only as a witness. But they are not going to be judged. Look at Matthew chapter 12 verse number 41. This is what the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 12 verse 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So the Bible says in judgment, they will rise and they will condemn. Who? Those people who did not receive Jesus as their Savior. So at the great white throne, all the unsaved are there in front of God and the saved are there to witness how God will judge these people and send them to hell. At the judgment seat of Christ, this judgment concerns the service of the believers in order to determine our rewards. So what is going to be judged at the uh, judgment seat of Christ is our works, not our life per se, but only our works. While at the great white throne judgment, sin is judged. So at the judgment seat, it is not our sin that will be judged. It will be our works. Ano yung ginawa mo sa Panginoon pagkatapos mong maligtas? Yun ang i-judge. Yun ang i-determine. Pero sa great white throne, sin is going to be judged and the degree of punishment in hell will be determined. So sa impyerno po, merong mas matinding parusa. Merong, ah, pastor, di na ako sa hindi matindi. Hindi. Yung hindi matindi, matindi yun. Meron lang mas matindi. Kasi ang apoy ay apoy. Pero meron lang apoy na mas mainit. Naiintindihan niyo yung degree of punishment. So yun po yung i-determine sa great white throne. At the judgment seat of Christ, it will take place after the rapture. Pagkatapos ng rapture, magkakaroon ng judgment seat. Habang dito sa lupa ay mayroong great tribulation. So sabay yun. Habang yung mga naiwan, pinarurusahan, pinahihirapan, yun namang mga naligtas ay niririwardan sa kanilang mga ginawa doon sa langit. And it will happen after the rapture. Matthew 16, 27. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. The Bible says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His works. So merong magkakaroon na rewarding ceremony pagkatapos ng rapture. Pero ang great white throne judgment ay mangyayari after the millennial reign of Christ. Pagkatapos ng um, marriage supper of the Lamb, magkakaroon ng battle of Armageddon. Pagkatapos magkakaroon ng 1,000 year reign of Christ. After nung 1,000 year reign of Christ, doon pa lang yung great white throne judgment. So yung pagitan ng judgment seat at saka great white throne judgment ay more than 1,000 years. Kaya malayong malayo yung dalawa. Basahin po natin sa Revelations chapter 20 verses 7 to 11. Ito po yung sabi ng Bible. And when the thousand years are expired, expired na, nangyari na, tapos na, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Yan po yung si Satan. Sa millennium, kaya may kapayapaan, kaya hindi magulo kasi si Satan nakakulong. Wala siyang magagawa during the millennium. But after the millennium, Satan will be loose. Why? Because God wanted to prove that people are sinful. That no matter how perfect our environment is, 
Just like in the Garden of Eden, given the chance, we will still commit sin and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to, gather them to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Ibig sabihin, millennium na ha? Si Kristo na ang presidente ng buong mundo. Si Kristo na yung nakaupo sa trono. Ang magkakasala pa rin o ang tatanggi pa rin kay Kristo kasing dami ng buhangin sa karagatan. Isipin niyo yun. Kaya, kaya sasabihin nila, kaya naman ang tao makasalanan kasi lumaki siya sa squatter. Kaya naman ang taong makasalanan kasi lumaki siya sa gitna ng mga taong makasalanan. Hindi ho, meron tayong sin nature. Kaya tayong makasalanan. Ito po, wala na silang masasabi. Walang gutom. Di ba sabi nila, kaya ako nagnakaw kasi nagugutom ang pamilya ko. Kaya ako ginawa ito kasi hirap na hirap kami. Sa millennium po, walang magugutom. Wala, kahit isa. Walang corruption. Wala kahit isa. Walang injustice. Kasi ang Panginoon na mangunguna, it is going to be a reign of righteousness. Walang magsasabing, inargabyado ako. Walang broken family. Walang maghihiwalay na mga mag-asawa. Walang masyadong sakit. Ang pinakabatang mamamatay ilang taon? Isang daan. Yun ang pinakabatang mamamatay during the millennium. It is an environment that is conducive to all that is good and godly. And yet, the Bible says, those who will be deceived by the devil is as many as the sand of the sea. Just imagine that. Kaya lahat ng excuse natin ngayon, hindi ho pwede. Ay, kaya lang naman ako nagkaganito kasi lumaki ako sa pamilyang magulo. It is your choice. It is my choice. It is our choice. Kaya ako nagkaganito kasi biktima ako ng circumstance, no? You are a victim of your own choice. Because God manifested Himself in so many ways. But we did not give any effort to know God. Kaya nga pag nagkasala tayo, nagkamali tayo, ganito ang turo mga kapatid. Hindi sa iba. Hindi ibang dahilan kung ba't nagkasala tayo. Maaring may kinalaman sila, but we still decide. Kung ayaw mong magkasala, kahit anong gawin nila, kahit anong tukso, kung hindi ka mahuhulog, ikaw pa rin magde-decide. Ikaw ang pumili na magnakaw. Ikaw ang pumiling magsinungaling. Ikaw ang pumiling mga lunya. Ikaw ang pumili na mag-away. Ikaw ang pumili na gawin yung hindi dapat. It is our choice. So hindi pwedeng ang Diyos. Amen? Kasi God will provide an environment that is conducive to all that is good and godly and yet people will be deceived. Tuloy natin yung basa, kapatid. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Tinan mo yung tapang nila. Si Christ ang naghari for 1,000 years. Alam nyo ba yung paghahari niya rito? Hand of iron. Any person who will reject Christ openly will be dealt with at that particular moment. Parang baliktad ng persecution. Yung tatanggi kay Kristo, patay agad. Kaya, sa millennium, ang mga underground, yung mga antichrist. Yung mga ayaw sa Diyos. Pero nakita nila yung kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. And when Satan deceived them, Satan can still make them believe that they can overthrow God. Talagang yan ng tao. Tinin yung Tower of Babel. Gawa tayo ng tower na makakarating hanggang sa langit sa tahanan ng Diyos. Bakit? Gusto niya lang i-overthrow ang Diyos. Kailan nangyari yan? When Lucifer fell. And that was placed in the mind and in the heart of people 
That is why our main problem is we think that we are the God of ourselves. Hindi na naalis yan mula nung ilagay ni Satan sa puso ni Eva at ni Adan. Ye shall be as gods. Yun na yun, hanggang ngayon. Kaya nga diba sabihin tao, ano pakialam mo sa akin? Buhay ko to. Oh, see? Laging yun ang excuse nila. Wala kang pakialam, pakialam mo yung sa'yo. Ito gusto kong gawin. Ano pakialam mo kung magkasakit ako? Ikaw pa magkakasakit? Ay, ah, eh, mga ganyan eh. Ano, kung mapahamak ako, ikaw ang papahamak? Yan ang tao ngayon. Kasi yun ang inilagay ni Satan. Ay naniwala sila. And they try to overthrow God, but God is a powerful God. He is an almighty God. And then He uh, sent fire from heaven and devoured all of them. You cannot win against God. Amen? Verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them, see, was cast into the lake of fire. Yung mapapanan niya, blo. Pero mo nagpadaya ka dun sa papunta sa lake of fire. And brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Nauna na yung beast. At saka yung false prophet kasi naano sila sa tribulation period. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And verse number 11 The Bible says, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And that will be the judgment where all of this will join Satan, the devil and the false prophet in hell. And they will be tormented, as the Bible says, forever and forever. So kaya kung hindi ka ligtas kapatid, eh, kaibigan, hindi pa, hindi ka ligtas kapatid. Kung hindi ka ligtas kaibigan, diyan ka pupunta. Uh, uh, kaibigan, diyan ka pupunta. At pahihirapan ka doon araw at gabi magpakailan kailan paman. Hindi isang araw. Hindi isang buwan. Hindi isang taon. Hindi sampung taon. Hindi isang daang taon. Hindi isang libong taon. Hindi isang milyong taon. Walang hanggang paghihirap sa apoy ng impyerno. Kaya nga, we are doing everything to preach the gospel to people. Kaya nga kapatid, if you are saved and all you think about are the things that will make you happy in this world, What kind of a Christian are we? When God saved us from the torment of hell so that we can realize that people are going there and we need to do something about it. Sabi mo, hindi, ayoko eh. Yan ang gagawin ko eh. Wala kayong pakialam. Wala kami magagawa, of course, kung ayaw mo. Pero there is a judgment seat. Eh, ano ngayon? Sa judgment seat naman, hindi naman yung kasalanan ng i-judge. Yung works lang. Eh, hindi baling walang reward, langit pa rin. Dito mo makatwira ng mga tao, no? Hindi baling ang walang reward, langit pa rin. So, eh, ano kung walang reward? Tandaan mo, sabi mo, pitong taon lang naman yun. Ano pitong taon? May 1,000 years pa, tapos nun. Yung may reward, magre-rain. Yung walang reward, re-rainan. Sa millennium, walang tigil ang kakautos namin sa'yo. Lahat ng mga hindi mo ginawa, <laughs> ipagagawa namin sa'yo doon sa millennium. Amen? Isang libong taon yun na pag na ibibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Now, there are some people who claim that at the judgment seat of Christ, kasi there are, you see, if you do not rightly divide the word of truth, you can be deceived. And they said that, one, one preacher said that at the judgment seat of Christ, they are going to play your life. And everything that you have done will be shown. Every lies, every secret things done in the guise of darkness. Everything that you have thought, everything that you have said, and you will be ashamed when they finally show your life. Nakakatakot, di ba? Halimbawa, 
the life of Mon Philip Quenza. Naku, siguro abang piniplay na gano'n. Uh, pass forward! Pass forward! Kamong gano'n eh, no? Eh, medyo may, may nakakahiya ron eh. Uh, may, may naisip ka, may nagawa ka na, eh, 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 Panginoon, parang awa nyo na ho! Impyerno na lang ho! <laughs> Wag yun ang ibalabas yan! Uh, eh, y- yun ang sinasabi. Why? Because some pastors wanted to, their reason may, may be good, but they want to make the people feel guilty so that they will not do such thing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it may be a good reason, but we are for the truth. At the judgment seat of Christ, no sin will ever be judged. Why? Because all of us are justified by the Lord, Jesus Christ, and no sin will ever be shown at the judgment seat of Christ. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. This is what the Bible says. Because if they will see your sin, they will condemn you. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is no more uh, condemnation. We are justified. We already have peace with God. Look at Romans uh, chapter 8, verse number 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God. That justify it. Ano may ibig sabihin ng justify or justification? Meaning to say, it is the legal act of God whereby He declared the sinner righteous. So, as far as God is concerned, you have no sin. I have no sin. So there is no sin that will be shown up there in Heaven, look at Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. And then, uh, I, I believe that is in uh, Psalms 103, verses 10 to 12. Psalms 103, verses 10 to 12. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarding, rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath He removed our transgressions from us. Nung tanggapin mo si Kristo, inalis na niya lahat ng ating kasalanan. Pinatawad na niya lahat ng ating kasalanan. E bakit ipapakita pa? E tapos na yun. There is a very great illustration regarding justification. And I always use this. There was this businessman who bought a Rolls Royce. We know what is a Rolls Royce. It is one of the most expensive car in the world. Rolls Royce is the maker of the uh, engine of uh, Boeing airplane. So that is made by Rolls Royce. So this man from Europe bought a Rolls Royce and he went on an island bringing his Rolls Royce on a ferry with him. While he was in that island, something wrong happened to his Rolls Royce. So he called England, the, the manufacturer regarding the problem, and they flew a mechanic from England to that island and fixed his car. And then the mechanic flew back to England. So after his uh, vacation, he went back to England. He was wondering how much he owned. He owed Rolls Royce because of the, uh, the, 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 what the mechanic did to his car. So he went to the company and he said, how much do I owe you? And they said, sir, about what? Because you flew a mechanic in that uh, where I was because of the uh, problem of my car. And they look at the record and they said, We are sorry, sir. There is nothing in our record that any wrong happened with our Rolls Royce. And the same thing with God. Satan may accuse us. Satan may charge us. But when God opened the books, he was said, Sorry, Satan. There is no record that my son, Haji, had ever seen in his life. 
There is no record that my children had ever committed sin. Why? Because we are justified by God. Amen? John 5.24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. So we are already justified. So there is no more sin that will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. So now the question is this. Since we are going to all appear at the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he returns, question, do we have a grudge against a brother or a sister? Meron ba tayong galit sa ating puso? Sa kapatid. Alisin na ho natin yun. Amen. Alisin na ho natin yun. Meron ba tayong grudge against the church? Alisin na ho natin yun. We have to remove that in our life. If Christ will come today, can we say that we have not left our first love, our love for the Word of God, our love for the church, our love for prayer, our love for the gathering of ourselves together. If Christ will come today, are we obeying the commands of God that He has given us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? You see, there are commands that were given to us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and later on we will look at some of them. But why do we have to do this? Because of 1 John chapter 2, verse number 28. Look at this. Look at what the Bible says. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear. Amen. When he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Amen. Ako, ako palagay ko, ang Panginoon babalik linggo eh. During service time. Palagay ko lang ha. Hindi ito Bible. Palagay ko. Pwede akong tama, pwede akong mali. Pero pastor, bakit palagay mo Sunday darating para mapapahiya yung mga absent? Na ipinagpalit nila ang araw ng Panginoon sa kung ano-ano ang kanilang ginagawa sa araw na yun. Mali mo, dumating siya habang nagsaservice yung karamihan. Ikaw naman ay nasa pasyalan, nasa party, nasa bakasyon. And then bigla kang mararapture habang nagrarapture. Sabi mo, ako nakakahiya naman ito nangyari ito. Bakit ngayon pa? Sa dinami-dami naman ang araw. E sabi nga ng Bible, He will come like a thief in the night. When no man expected, then Christ will come. Amen? So that is why we must always be ready. Okay, so what is the judgment seat of Christ? The judgment seat of Christ is a place of review. It is a place of review and our life will be reviewed since we got saved, particularly our works until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, as we have read a while ago in chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 to 12, that there was a foundation laid and that foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. It was already laid and now we are going to build upon that foundation. So all of us, have a foundation. Question, what are we going to build upon that foundation? If you, will, if you will do nothing, it will only be a foundation. But you can build something on top of that foundation. Listen, that foundation will never be shaken because that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody can touch that foundation. Nobody can move that foundation. Nobody can destroy that foundation. But we are going to build Upon that foundation and question, what are we going to build upon it? That's why, as a Christian, we need to do something after we got saved. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are, we are his workmanship, created unto good works. Listen, a Christian is created to do good. Those are the things that we are going to build upon that foundation. 
So, are we building? Yes, we are. Question, what are we building upon that foundation? Kapatid, kahit ganong katibay ang pundasyon, pag ang itinayo mo mahina, babagsak yung itinayo mo, ang hindi lang apektado yung pundasyon. Amen. So that is what we are doing right now. So at the judgment seat, the things that we have laid on that foundation will be reviewed. Re-review. Yung mga pag-awit mo rito, i-re-review. Kumanta ka ba para sa Diyos? O kumanta ka para sa sarili mo? Amen. May kumakanta para luwalatiin ng Diyos, may kumakanta para pasikatin ng sarili. Alin doon yung pagkantang ginawa mo? Kaya minsan maganda pa nga yung pangit ang boses mo eh. Hindi ka makapagyabang pagkakanta ka eh. Kaya lamang na lamang si Chona pagdating sa judgment seat of Christ, amen? Kasi hindi siya kakanta para sa sarili niya. Eh yung mga magaganda boses, aba pagkakanta na. Touch your people once. Again. Diba? I stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When you look at me and see the nails cut and that bought my liberty. I stand redeemed. Oh, ganun, wala. Yan ang ginagawa nung iba. Kumakanta para sa sarili. So, ba't kumanta ka? Ayan, pinalakpakan ka, tapos na, laban. Yun. Yung, yung pagbibigay mo. Paano yun? Para sumikat ka? O para matustusan ang gawain ni Diyos kasi good steward ka ng Panginoong Diyos? So everything that we have done will be under review. Iri-review yun. Pag-aakay mo ng kaluluwa. Kasi may mga nag-aakay ng kaluluwa na akala mo mahal ang Diyos. Pero hindi pala. Naalala ko nung uh, when I got baptized in, in the church where I got saved, that same day, a couple went out of the church and they said that we're going to leave this church. This church will be crippled because we will not be here anymore. You see, they're doing these things in order for them to be seen, to be noticed, and uh, for people to look up at them. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you have accomplished for God, it is only by the grace of God, and once you claim the glory, that's the end of it. Wala na, yun ang reward mo. Sumikat ka na, nakilala ka na, kaya nga sa judgment seat of Christ, ang maraming award, maraming reward, yung hindi kilala. Kasi nagtrabaho sila ng kahit hindi pinapansin. Kahit nasa background lang, kahit na hindi tinatapik ang balikat, they are doing things for God and for God alone. But you see, there are people without any audience they are not going to do anything. But if there is an audience, then you can see the best of them. But not the best of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it is a place of review. Number two, it is a place of reward. Judgment seat of Christ is a place of reward. In the Greek, uh, the judgment seat of Christ is bematos to Christu. Bima. Bima judgment. Bematos to Christu. 2 Corinthians 5.17 So it is known as the bima seat or the bima judgment. Ano ba yun? Yung bima seat or judgment it is a race platform in the middle of an Olympic arena where the judge is sitting and will give awards to those who won the event or the race. So, nakaangat yan. At yung mga nanalo, tatayo doon at bibigyan ng, dati kasi hindi medal eh, leaves ang nilalagay, laurel, leaves. Kaya, Pagka na, na-awardan ka ng laurel leaves, masarap ang ulam nyo. Kasi isasama mo yon sa iyong iluluto. So yun yung binibigay nila na award. But listen, losing the race will not mean execution. 
hindi papatayin yung mga natalo. Ibig lang sabihin, wala silang reward. Pagputihin na lang nila next time. Baka sakasakaling sila ay manalo. But the difference between that physical bima judgment and the bima judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ is this. We are in a race, but we are not competing against each other. Hindi pa unahan kung hindi pasunuran sa kalooban ng Diyos. Actually, what we're doing is that if we see a brother or sister lagging behind, we may even lend them a hand so that we can help them reach the finish line. Ito yung karera na hindi nagpapaunahan kung pwede nga sabay-sabay na dumating doon sa finish line. That is why we carry one another's burden. That is why we exhort one another. That is why we pray one for another. That is why we help one another. Why? Because all of us wanted everyone to receive a reward from the Lord. Amen? So we are going to give an account of our selves to Christ. Hindi, hindi mo ibibigay account yung iba. Kaya, sa paglilingkod, ang pakialaman mo is what you're doing for Christ and encourage your brother but do not compare yourselves to them. Because we have our own course to negotiate, we have our own race that we have to finish and if all of us will reach the finish line, then all of us is going to receive a reward from God. Amen? Okay, as I have said, the purpose of the Bima judgment is for us to receive reward and it is not for our sin. So let us, need to un- let us understand this. In, in the past, God deal, dealt with us as sinners. Nung nakaraan, ang dealing sa atin ng Diyos ay sinner. Kaya dito sa Ephesians, sabi sa Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 3, eto yan, sabi ng Bible. And you had he quickened who were dead, past, were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past, nakaraan, ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse number three. Among whom also we had our conversation, our life in times past, in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So nung nakaraan, ang dealing sa atin ng Diyos, makasalanan. But when we receive Jesus in the present, ang dealing sa atin ng Diyos ay as children. Amen? Or as sons and daughters. Look at Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14, ano sabi? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So ngayon, save na tayo. God is dealing with us as His children. Hindi na sinner. Kung hindi, children na. So kung children, ano yan? Uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verses 5 to 11. Ito yung dealing ng Diyos sa anak. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Ito rin yung sinasabi sa atin ng Diyos. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. So as children, we will all be partakers of God's chastening. Sa Tagalog, pagpapalo. Why? Because we still commit sin. And those sin are going to be dealt here and now, not there. Ako niya? Dito na ididil yon. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Kaya sa preaching, masakit. Nire-rebuke ka ng Diyos. Huwag kang nagagalit. Lalong huwag mong kagalitan yung pastor kasi ang prinits ng pastor yung Bible. Ang kagalitan mo, sarili mo, dali ikaw ang gumawa nun. Amen. Verse number... Next verse. For whom the Lord loveth. My, ang ganda. Pag pinalo ka, dapat magsaya ka. Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi pinapatunayan lang na mahal ka ng Diyos. 
For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and is courted, hinahambalos. Sino? Every son whom he receiveth. So, lahat tayo nakaranas na ng hambalos ng Diyos. Dapat, ha? kasi anak tayo eh. Pag hindi ka pa nahahambalos, eh, delikado, verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Sabi niya, eh, yung hindi pinapalo. Hindi anak talaga yun. Ano yun? Verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, lahat ng anak, then ye are bastards and not sons. Bastardo ka. Hindi ka tunay na anak. Ang tawag yan, anak sa labas. Anong gagawin mo pag may anak ka sa labas? Papasukin mo. Yan, di ba? Baka umulan, mabasa. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. You see, when your parents correct you, you reverence them. You thank them. Why? Because they care for you. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of the spirits and live? Verse 10. For they verily for a few days just chase in us after their own pleasure. Minsan, yung kagustuhan eh, kaya pinapalo eh. But He, for our prophet, si Cristo, that we might be partakers of His holiness because He wants us to live a holy life. And verse 11, now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, of course. Hindi, hindi masaya ang pinapalo. Ba, pag pinalo mo, anak mo, pag palo mo, bak, <laughs> abay, delikado. Baka may ibang espiritu yung anak mo. Di ba? Pag pinapalo, pinagsasabihan, malungkot. Sabi niya, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Mahirap yan. Nevertheless, afterward, yung pinag-uusapan after that, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Kaya may pagdidisiplina. Pinagsasabihan ka, pinapalo ka, pinagbubuatan ka ng kamay, minsan pinapalayo ka, may pinaparealize sa'yo. Dapat ma-realize mo yun. Sabi ng iba, Pinalayo ako ng magulang ko, hindi ako nag enjoy eh, Hindi naman talaga enjoyable eh. Saan ka nakakita pinalo ka, pinalayo ka, nag-enjoy ka, eh, i-reward yun. Amen. So hindi talaga. Pero hayaan mo. Magpasakop ka. Later on sasabihin mo, salamat. Kung hindi ako dinisiplina, hindi ako disiplinado ngayon. That's why sometimes we we uh, do not appreciate those who are quite strict to us. Not knowing that the reason why they are strict is because they do not want us to go astray. That we believe a life that is pleasing to God. So in the past, God deals with us as what? Sinners. In the present, as sons. And in the future, God will deal with us as stewards. Ano yung stewards? Di ba sabi ng, ng parable? Pagbalik ng master, magbibigay ng account yung mga stewards na binigyan niya ng talent. Right? Yung isa, sabi niya, yung lima po, nadagdagan. Bigyan ng sampu yan. Yung tatlo po, nadagdagan. Bigyan yan. Yung isa, tinago ko po, alisin mo yung nasa kanya. Di ba meron na, na wala pa? Kaya dito, pag hindi ka naglingkod, you will suffer loss. What God has entrusted to you, He will remove. If you are not going to be a good steward, that's why we emphasize stewardship. Because this is what matters in the future. What we have done for Christ. Only one life, so soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one chance, I've been in the Bible, to do His will. Ngayon lang. Wala na ang soul winning sa langit. Sino yung soul win mo ron? Kada kausapin mo, are you saved? Are you, sino? Baka mat, matanong mo, pang, pang, uh, uh, are you saved? Ay, naku, sorry po. Kasi po, namis, hindi ako nakapag soul winning sa lupa. Eh, wala na ang soul winning doon. Wala nang counseling doon. 
Lahat ng ginagawa natin dito na pwedeng paglilingkod, marang, karamihan doon wala na. Ang itutuloy na lang natin doon, yung mga awitan, pagpupuri sa Diyos, yan ang itutuloy natin. Pero yung paglilingkod na kinakailangan sa mga unbelievers, wala na. Oh. Kaya the Bible says, what? While it is day, for the night cometh, when no man can work. So let us take the opportunity to serve God now because one day, our stewardship will be rewarded by God. Kaya work. Amen? Work, work, serve. Whatever God has entrusted to us, let us do it. So what will be the materials? Alam natin, two kinds of materials. The indestructible materials. Ano yan? Gold, silver, precious stones. These are works done for the glory of God. And then, wood, hay, and stubble. These are works done for our own glory. So, pag yung glory mo, ginawa mo for your glory, na-receive mo na yung glory, wala nang kwenta yun, masusunog yun. Amen. But if you did that for the glory of God, mananatili yun because God's glory is forever. Pero yung glory natin, fleeting, skin deep, pansamantala. Hindi mananatili magpakailan, kailan paman. So what are the things that, that are going to be judged? Bilisan lang po natin ito dahil napakarami. Walumputwalo itong mga bagay na hahatulan sa judgment number one. Uh, Hebrews 6.10. Bilisan natin, bilisan natin. Hebrews 6.10. Ano sabi rito? 6.10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. See? God will never forget what you have done for Him, which He have showed toward His name, in that ye have ministered to the saints. And do minister. So, aning ijaja, number one, how well you treat other believers. Di ba sabi, do good to all men, especially to the household of faith. That is why, it is doubly disturbing if you will shortchange a brother or a sister in the Lord. Kesa yung unbeliever. Doubly yun. Kaya nga, yung reward ng how you treat your brother and sister, eh, matindi. Sa harapan ng Panginoon. So that is why we need to treat each other right. Look at Matthew 10, 41-42. 10, 41 and 42. The Bible says, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So yun yung pagtanggap lang natin sa isa't isa, may reward. Yung pagpapainom mo nga ng tubig na malamig, mayroong reward. Yung pagdalaw mo sa prison, mayroong reward. Yung pagpapakain mo, amen, may reward. Kaya pakainin nyo kami ng pakainin. Amen. Para may reward. Pastor, magpakain naman kayo. Maraming na kaming reward. Kayo na binigyan naman kayo ng chance na magkaroon ng reward. Amen? So, how you treat other believers? Number two, Hebrews 13, 17. Ito, maganda to. Kasi pastor ako eh. <laughs> maganda to. Jose, ang galing lapit, ano? Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. Tignan nyo, as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Kaya, mag-obey daw kayo. Kanino? Sa merong rule over you. Sino yun? Dito sa church, ako, yung pastor nyo, yung mga leaders natin. Hindi dahil sa gusto namin sundin nyo kami. No. Kasi utos ito ng Diyos. Dahil pag naging masunurin tayo, kanino doon sa nagbabantay sa inyong kaluluwa? Ibig sabihin, we care about your soul. Why? We will give account. Mananagot kami sa inyo. Ako ito mga kapatid, dere ang salita. Dere ang salita. Panadagotan ko lahat ng kaluluwa na natiwalag sa simbahang ito. Pastor, bakit? Eh kasi pati hindi sila nag-grow. Ako ang pastor. Nagkulang ako. Amen. 
I have to admit that. But hindi kayo nag-grow hanggang ngayon? Nagkulang ako. Ay, hindi pa, sir, may pagkukulang ako. Bahala ka ron, pananagutan mo yun. Pero ang pagkakaiba ng pastor, mananagot na ako sa sarili ko. Mananagot pa ako sa inyo. Oh. Kaya isipin nyo yun, mga kapatid. Kung ako yung masamang pastor, iwan nyo ako, maghanap kayo ng pastor na palalaguin kayo. Pero kung ako'y nagtuturo ng mabuti, bagamat ako'y may mga kahinaan din sa aking sarili, yung tinuturo ko, sindin ninyo, kasi para sa inyo yon at magkaroon kayo ng magandang reward sa harapan ng Diyos. Para ano raw, so that I will do it with joy. Hindi ba nakaalala ng mga nakaraan, ang saya-saya nating naglilingkod sa Diyos. Dumating ang time na medyo may kalungkutan. Why? Because there are people who start to disobey. And things happen. And ang maganda, pwede nating ibalik ang nakaraan. Amen? Sabi nga ni Lea Salonga, sana maulit muli. Sinabi rin niya ni Gary Valenciano. Di ba? Sinabi rin niya ni April Boy Rihino yata. Hindi ko alam kung saan nagsabi na, no? Pero, ang maganda, sinabi yan ng Bible. Amen? Yan ang pinaka the best. Now, you, you obey. For they watch over your soul. Mga kapatid, you need to understand that we are not here to profit from you physically, but we want your soul to be right with God. So, what will be judged then? How well you submit to authority and how well you exercise your authority towards the people of God. Ako naman, inabuso ko ba yung authority ko? Mananagot ako sa Diyos. James 3.1 Mananagot ako. Pag mali yung gamit ko ng authority. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Yan ang kalagayan ng pastor at ng mga leaders. Ang reward nila, maganda, marami. Pero ang condemnation nila, greater to whom much is given, much is required. Kaya, huwag kayong maiingit sa posisyon ng mga pastor. Mahirap. Ang daming tempt. Look at many pastors. They are, they are being tempted to abuse the authority. Why? Because of the accolade that can be given to them. Kaya ang hirap. Pag magaling kang pastor, hahangaan ka, papalakpakan ka, pupurihin ka, eh tao ka, nasa laman ka. Ano tendency? Lalaki yung ulo mo. Hanggang sumabog. Pagsabog ng ulo mo, kalat ang utak mo. Wala ka nang mapapala sa buhay. Amen? Kaya mga member din, mag-submit kayo ng ayos. Huwag kayong mang uto ng pastor. Ay, pastor, ikaw ang pinakamagalig na pastor na nakilala ko sa buhay ko. Kasi nung haling mo naman, wala ka naman ibang nakilalang pastor eh. Iilang palang nakilala mo, pinakamagaling na yung tama na ho yung pastor, praise God for your life. To God be the glory. Pakita mo sa pastor na ano man ang gawin niya, ina-appreciate mo. Pero, alam mo na kaya niya lang nagagawa yun dahil sa biyaya ng Diyos. Iba overacting eh. Isang milya pa yung pastor, sasalubungin na eh. Pastor, akin na ho yan lahat ng daga niyo. Akin na, akin na pastor. Dito pastor, ako kayo. Dito pastor, upo na ho kayo. Ang OA mo naman, huwag naman ganun. Amen? At ikaw naman ang pastor, porket leader ka, hindi akala mo kung sino ka. Ha? Taya! Oh, ganun. Biro mo sa church. Yeah. Atorni, tayo. Kunyari, atorni ka, tayo. Ikaw, 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 ikaw. Amiel, tayo. Ator. Sino na susunod atorni sa church na ito? Kayo po, kamo. Hmm. <laughs> Di ba, pag nagkakamali ka, sinasampal kita? Opo. opo. <laughs> Ba't ko ginawa yun? Kasi kayo po nakakalam ng tama. May sagot mo. Kasi kayo po nakakalam ng tama. 
Uh, meron, tagal po ka na, uto-uto. Meron mo. Gaganunin mo. Tapos, miyembro, palalapitin mo sa harap. Dok, dok, alika rito. Ikaw, doktor, hanti ka sa ulo mo. Upo dyan! Ay, dapa! Tapos papaluin mo sa harapan ng mga tao para ipakita mo lang na ang galing mo. Ay, mananakot ka sa Diyos. Wala kang reward. Biro may alam akong pastor, buntes papaluin. Sabi ng asawa, pastor, ako na lang ho. Buntis naman ho yung asawa ko, papaluin nyo. Sa harapan ng church. Sabi ko nga, ako, ako yung pinalo, demand ako, pastor, pag di na kulong yan. Walang karapatan ng pastor sa ganun. Ang pastor, nagtuturo, nagka-counsel, hindi namamalo. Hindi nanununtok. Yung mga pastor, talaga suntokin ka eh. Pagka nagkamali ka, di ba may mga nakita na kayong ganun? Talagang, eh, naalala ko yung si Mars Gitabaw. Ah, naghahanap ng, Brother Joel, kaya niya, saan ba may granada? Saan ako pwedeng bumili? <laughs> Sabi ko, kaya may granada! Hindi, wala meron ito. Ito eh. True story. Si Mars Gitabaw, nag-aaral niya sa, sa kung saan nag-aaral ang ama niyo, sa bayanihan. Si Mars Gitabaw, kasi may polio. Okay, tinanong yun eh. Anong height mo? 'yung ka nga hindi naman ano 'yung Bible school. Hindi naman mga marine ang nando doon. 'Di ba? Eh sa marine nga hindi tatanggapin pag may polio ka eh. Sa marine isa lang ang height mo kung 5555. Oh. Pinaya niya kaya do not abuse your authority. Amen. Use it according to the will of God. Number 3. First Peter 4:10. Daan na lang natin to. How well we use our God-given abilities. And every man that received the gift, even so ministered the same one to another. As good, what? Stewards of the manifold grace of God. Anong talent meron ka? Ipagamit mo sa Diyos. Anong gift ang binigay sa'yo? Abay, pag binuro mo yan, walang reward yan. Marunong kang umawit, umawit ka para sa kaluwalatian ng kaluwalatian ng Diyos. Magaling ka sa sa arts, gamitin mo para sa kaluwalatian ng Diyos. Magaling kang sumayaw, sayo na lang. O ganoon. Yung mga gift na makapag edify sa church at makakaluwalati sa Panginoon, amen. Gamitin mo bakit? Hindi binigay yan para sa iyong sarili. Binigay yan para luwalatian mo ang Diyos at patibayan ng church number four. 1 Timothy 6, 17 to money. How well we use our money? Paano mong ginamit yung pera mo? Hmm. 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19. Ano sabi ng Bible? Hmm. Charge them that are rich in this world. Oh, yung rich in this world, yung may pera. Sabi ni Paul, charge mo that they be not high-minded. Pag may pera ka, huwag kang mayabang. Ano ba ang dapat mo ipagyabang dahil may pera ka lang? Eh, yung pera naman yan, pwedeng mawala. Ah, hindi ba? Huwag kayong mayabang pag may pera kayo. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Hindi tiyak. Bakit? Baka bukas lang ang dollar wala ng value. Hindi natin alam. 
Ba nung nagkaroon ng gera sa Pilipinas, ang, ang pera mo, isang bayong bibili ka, isang tasty ang mabibili mo sa isang bayong na pera. Oh, maigi pang kainin mo pera, mas busog ka. Oh, bakit? Uncertain ng riches eh. Sabi ko nga, gaano mang kalaki ang bahay mo, pag nasunog yan, abo. Nalahar, tabon. Nanakawang ka, ubos. But in the living God, who giveth us richly, all things to enjoy. Mag-trust ka sa Diyos because God can give you even though it is less, but you can richly enjoy it. That's what the Bible says, that they do good. See? If you are rich, you have more chances to do good. Kasi mas may pera ka, pinagtiwala sa inyo ng Diyos. Pero that they be rich in good works, hindi lang sa pera, kundi sa good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, magbigay. Then verse 19, Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Kasi merong judgment seat. So doon tayo naglelay sa foundation na yun, sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Hindi lang yun. Ah, dito sa number five, how much we suffer for Jesus. Kaya yung suffering, hindi ito kinatatakutan. We may welcome kasi may reward. Look at Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 to 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. Wag, wag, ano ha? Wag, demonyo yan, tama naman siya. Wag ano na. Ayun, demonyo yan, pero mali siya. Amen. Yan dapat. For my sake, hindi dahil sa'yo, kundi dahil kay Kristo. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. Not only glad, but exceeding. Much joy. Why? Ang sabi niya, for great is your Reward in heaven. Matindi pala reward nung pinipersecute. Kaya sabi mo, Lord, sana po wag ako ma-persecute. O, parang sabi mo, Lord, sana po wala akong reward. Yun yun eh. Lord, tulungan niyo po ako in times of persecution. Nandu doon yung reward ng Panginoon. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Just look at the rewards of the prophets. Marami because they endure persecution in life. How well we use our time. Ephesians 5.16 Bilisan na natin. Dapat i-redeem natin yung ating time. Number seven, how well we run the race that God has given to us. 1 Corinthians 9.24 Kung nag-no-note kayo, Philippians 2.16 Next, how well we Control the old nature. 1 Corinthians 9, 25-27. Ito yung sabi ni Paul, I keep my body under subjection that when I preach unto others, I myself should not be a cast away. Number nine, how many people we witness to and win for Christ? Proverbs eleven thirty. He that winneth souls is wise. Dito, yung, dito natin ako question ng mga Calvinists eh. Paano naging wise ang soul winning kung namang itinakda na ng Diyos kung sino maliligtas? Ah, hindi ba? Anong kawaisan doon? Wala. O yun, talino ko kasi yung pinili ng Diyos na witnessan ko. Kahit di mo witnessan yung pinili na yun eh. So there is nothing wise in that. That's why, ako habang tumatagal, I, 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 really, I am really being convinced that Calvinism uh, was concocted in order to destroy the things that God wants us to do in life. Eh. So that we are not going to become an effective Christian anymore. Because once you believe in election, the way Calvinism defined election, then you are doomed at the judgment seat of Christ because there will be no reward because you're not going to exert any effort anymore for everything has been determined. Wala ka na magagawa. At even if you serve God in a... a great way, it is not you. It was determined by God beforehand that you do it. So that is the danger. And later on, we will study about that. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 to 20, uh, 19 to 20 kasama rin sa 
sa soul winning and Daniel 12.3 you are going to be a star in heaven tama pag nag soul winning ka star ka sa heaven oh sinabi yun Daniel 12.3 o tignan mo gusto mo maging superstar ha oh, mag soul winning ka hindi ka lang wise star ka pa and they that be wise oh hindi ba soul winners are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and forever Si Bill Masantos, star for all seasons. Ikaw naman, star forever and ever. Ah, pero mo, wala silang sinabi sa'yo. Why? Kasi nag-akay ka ng kaluluwa sa Panginoon. Number 10, how well we react to trials and temptation. And if there is a temptation and you overcome temptation, there is a reward. So when temptation comes, then that is our chance to God a reward for God. Revelations 2.10 and James 1, 2-3. Then, number 11, how much we love the doctrine of the second coming. 2 Timothy 4.8 So, may reward pala yung excited ka sa second coming. Naalala ko si Brother Cesar. Uh, Sir Maribel, naalala mo pa yung Brother Cesar? Brother Joel, agagan na kami pa yung Brother Cesar. Asawa ng dinyo. Pagka nakita ka noon, kahit kailan kayo makita. Ano, Brad? Malapit na pagbabalik ng Panginoon. Ayan. Every time na makikita kayo, walang balya. Pag nakita ka, oh, malapit na ang pagbalik ng Panginoon. So talagang palagay ko, ang reward niya yun. Yun lang. <laughs> Pero may reward siya. Kasi talagang, <laughs> mahal na mahal niya ang <laughs> pagbabalik ng Panginoon. Backslider na yata siya, pero excited pa rin sa pagbabalik ng Diyos. Amen? And then number 12, how faithful we are to God's Word. And in feeding the flock of God. How much do we love the Word of God? Kaya lagi ko sabi, be a Berean. Study the Word of God. Test everything according to the Word of God as members. And as leaders, how well do we feed the people of God? 1 Peter 5, 2-4. 1 Peter 5, 2-4. Yan po. And then, anong result? Sabi mo, judgment, some will receive reward and some will suffer loss. Not the loss of salvation, but loss of reward. Pastor, meron ba namang reward na mawawala? Hindi pa kapag ka may reward ka, hindi na mawawala yun. Say na, hindi yun mga kapatid, meron ng mga reward na mawawala kapag ka tayo po ay hindi naging maingat. Meron po tayong five crowns Siguro, alam na po ba yung five crowns? Amen? Na ibibigay sa atin ng Panginoon sa judgment. The crown of righteousness. Crown of rejoicing para sa soul winner. Yung incorruptible crown para dun sa mga marunong mag-self-control. Yung malakas ang will nyo sa biyaya ng Diyos, sa tulong ng Diyos. Ang tawag dyan ay incorruptible crown. Meron tayong uh, crown of righteousness dun sa mahi- love niya yung second coming ng Panginoon. And then meron tayong uh, crown of uh, glory para sa mga naglingkod sa Diyos, mga pastors, mga deacons, mga servants of God. And then crown of life para yung mga nag- isinakripisyo yung buhay para sa Panginoon, yung martyr's crown. Yun yung uh, sinasabi nito. So lima po yung crown na yan. Ngayon, pwede pong ano yan? Mawala yan. Pag hindi tayo naging maingat. Totoo ba yun? Sige, tingnan natin dito sa ano. Uh, 2 John 1.8 Yung sabi dyan. 2 John 1.8 Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have brought but that we receive a full reward. O, see? There is a possibility that you will not receive a full reward. Why? Because instead of serving God, you serve self. Instead of doing it for God, you did it for yourself. That's why the Bible says, you will be saved, you will suffer loss, yet you will be saved, yet so as by fire. It is, it is a, a pain, painful way to be or to experience at the judgment seat of Christ. Look at Revelation 3.11. What did you say Hmm. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, 
that no man take thy crown. O si? Pwedeng makuha yan. Ano nangyari sa parable of the talent? Di ba? Yung, yung, yung lima, bigyan mo ng uh, sampu yan, maghari siya. Bigyan mo ng lima yan, maghari siya. Yung isa kunin mo sa kanya at bigyan mo rin sa may sampu. O. Oh. Di ba? Nakuha sa kanya na ibigay doon sa may sampu. Kaya we can lose our reward. We can lose our crown if we are not careful in serving the Lord. That is why if you are a lackadaisical Christian or yung, yung ano ka, yung, yung hindi serious sa iyong ginagawa at hindi para sa Diyos yung ginagawa mo, mawawala yan. So, you are going to regret that day. Pero yung mga ginawa mo para sa Panginoon, you are going to rejoice on that day. Amen? Magiging masaya ka kasi meron kang reward at mga crowns sa Panginoon. Bakit masaya? Kasi pagkatapos mong tanggapin yung mga crowns na yon, lalapit ka sa Panginoon sa paanan niya, luluhod ka, aalisin mo yung crown at sasabihin mo, Panginoon, ikaw lang ang worthy sa crown na ito. Bakit ka nagka-reward? Kasi una, humble ka eh. You realize that everything that you have done is only because of the grace of God. Kaya nga kapatid, meron three kinds of builders and we will end here. Merong wise builder. 1 Corinthians 3.14 Nag-build siya ng mga quality materials. Meron namang worldly builder. Verse number 15. Yung karnal. Wood and stubble na sunog. At meron namang wicked builder, verse 17, hindi pa save. So ano ka dito? Kung ikaw yung nasa verse 17, eh sana masave ka. Amen? At pag nasave ka, sana maging wise builder tayo. Nang sa ganun, sa judgment seat of Christ, ay makatanggap tayo ng reward sa ating Panginoon. Amen? So we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and everything that we have done after we got saved will be judged there. And it's either we will receive a reward or we will suffer loss in the light of our life now and in the light of the prospect of the judgment seat of Christ. What things are we going to do to change our lives so that we will be ready to face Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. I hope and I pray that we will make ourselves ready because this is something that we cannot avoid. Ulitin ko, the Bible says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the lessons. I pray, Lord, that this is not...